Come out. Oh my gosh, and we remember to record. Cap <laughs> oh, so, Before the end. <laughs> you had to bring that up, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, it's my job. So welcome everybody. Thank you so very much for joining us. Um, as you all know from the emails and whatnot, we just have returned from the Stitches event in Sacramento. And it was a really nice show, but we had so many wonderful things that you didn't get to see. So that's why we um, are having the Zoom to kind of show you what we showed there and what did well and what we're excited about. Carrie and I both wearing our wares, so is Barry. So, um, uh, so anyway, just I hope that you have a great time. Let us know if we can help, if you have questions. So I'm gonna then, this is Carrie, I'm Fontel. Now we're going to uh, share the screen with our host, Mr. Barry Klein. There you go, Barry. You're on. Well, <laughs> Perfect. And just as you said that, I got a text message. Am I available? <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh... It's perfect. That's Anyways, it. just real quickly, Andy, I haven't seen you in forever. So I am saying hi to you, Andy Landis. Hi there, Barry. Good to see you. Love you. Miss you. I, I miss you. And I think of many, many cruises together. Good. Well, we'll find another one one of these days. All right. So we're going to jump right in. Um, you're seeing kind of just this brand new thing that we're doing here. Um, my mom is here somewhere. She might come walk in and say hello to everybody. But we took over her office and turned it into a little showroom. And this is where we're going to do our Zooms from now on. And so we've kind of got it set up. We're going to walk our way through it. But before we do that, I think it's really important to know what are the yarns and what is the construction. Part of what we do in designing the sweaters is understanding the construction and making the yarn a part of what it is that you're knitting. Why the needle? Why the design? You're going to see most of the stuff that I've designed is very basic. It's all about the flow of the fabric, the way it fits on the body. So I'm going to switch cameras and walk you through a bunch <laughs> of fibers. And then I'm going to show you what the fibers look like when they're all knit up. All right. So there's no rhyme or reason to the order. So we're just going to kind of zip our way through. But this is a yarn called Ecopuno Degradé. And what Degradé means is that it's shaded from light to dark. The base of it is cotton, so it's strands of cotton. But to make it look like it's got a hair or a halo to it, they brush merino and alpaca and twist it inside. So it's a yarn that's perfect for every season. And you'll see the way the shading comes in in the sweater when we get to it. And this is alpha. And you get to see the best part of alpha, which is the metallic that's in here. So many times when companies use metallic, they use it as a binder. They wrap it around the outside. In this case, the yarn is tubular. So it's like a little casing. And the cotton is on the inside, but so is the metallic. So that when you wear it, it stays spongy, but it also stays soft because the metallic is internal and it gives you a really soft little sparkle. Now you can see that sparkle right up close. It is really soft yarn. It feels good. And they've continued with silk hair, but they've created brand new colors and they've changed the way of the dye. So this is um, kid mohair and silk. They blend the two fibers and then they twist them together. It's used as a, as a basically a hair. It's used as a component. And sometimes it's used on its own. In our case, we've blended it with another new yarn from Lana Grossa called Diversa. And Diversa, you can see, is a multi-stranded yarn. It's a really beautiful blend. They've done um, <clears throat> cotton and viscose. The cotton is the color part that changes. The viscose part stays the same in every one of the colors. Very, very soft. The twisted strands allow it to have some elasticity. And you'll see a sweater that we did that's got 11 of the 14 shades in it. Wow. Really, really fun. It was a very successful sweater at the show. People love the weight, the detail, and it is something that can work forever. If you don't like working on a small needle, it's also thin enough to be able to be doubled. We haven't done that yet, but it is something that's in my mind to come up next.
And that yellow is a screamer. <laughs> <laughs> the light attacked it. <coughs> this is a new yarn called Dodici, and it's 100% cotton. And what Dodici means in Italian is the number 12. So it is a 12 ply cotton. Lots of very fine strands, just has a great twist to it, but they keep the twist nice and loose so that the yarn isn't heavy. Great stitch definition and a really beautiful color range. And then new from Trendsetter is Celebrate. It's 100% cotton. And the way that it's dyed is that you get elongated shades. And internal to those shades, it has injected stripes or streaks. So in this case, it's all the shades of greens with teal and rust that comes in. And you'll see just how dramatic it is in the sweaters. Probably the most popular sweater from the show is one that we incorporated two color, two rows of one, two rows of another. And it is really, really beautiful. So you're gonna see that in a minute or two. And this is Pavlova. It's <laughs> cotton and viscose. So you can see this two different fibers twisted around each other. One of them's thick and thin, and one of them is standard, so that you get a little bit of a texture and the rest of it stays smooth. The striping on it is very, very shaded. There's nothing dramatic where something is thrown in. It just shades itself from one to the other. And again, you'll see exactly how it works when you see the garments. And <clears throat> this is Papagallo. This is a new yarn from Lana Grossa. And what you're gonna see in a lot of yarns now is that they're chained, they're tubular. So it starts out like a horse rein, it's circular, and it's got crochet hooks around it. And the fiber comes down and is chained, and it's basically like a shoelace. It gives you a nice air space down the middle, so it stays very, very light. And this is a 50 gram ball. So you can see just how light it is. This 50 gram, actually it's 100 gram ball, but it's still huge very, very light and gorgeous colors. And um, many of you know Jan Runkel. She's a really good friend of ours and does lots of designing for us. And she did a great cardigan that uses both yarns together. And so you can see, this is Blossom. It's got a really neat chenille style on the outside and injections of multicolors. And those colors match here. So you'll see the fabric that gets created. And then for this season, we've done some really beautiful pieces using what else but gorgeous Cardiff cashmere. And we're going to come back to me real quickly. I'm going to show you what I'm wearing because I'm wearing cashmere today. It's freezing in this warehouse. So um, I've got my cashmere on and we're going to start looking at sweaters. Everyone doing okay? I heard your heads nodding up and I, down. No, I, I muted everyone very slowly. I know, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone has questions, um, they have to, you have to unmute yourself and jump in. Yeah, please feel free to ask questions. Um, I have a really good person here with me today. Her name is Tet, and she's been willing to come and try on sweaters. Um, none of these things fit me or look good on me because they're not meant for me. But anyways, this is Cardiff Cashmere. And I finally decided it was time to do something that I would actually wear. So we played with four colors. And when the colors change, just gets a really subtle stripe to it. There's nothing difficult about it. Stockinette, a little bit of ribbing. It's extra, extra long. So depending on where you are, you can wrap it, drape it. You can do all sorts of different things to it. You could also double it and pull it through. And it's two balls each of four colors. So eight skeins of Cardiff. Um, I don't think we put any kit combinations together for you. Pick four colors or tell us you like earth, you like dramatic. It is unisex. So anyways, perfect scarf for everybody. We're going to start with Dodici. And all right, that, we're going to do it. Yes. Yeah. Wait a minute, because we have a brand new Cardiff hat. Oh, okay, perfect. I know. Hold on. Fantel. Look it back to you. Fantel, this is a perfect time, so we're adding ourselves. Okay, here. So, 
Here, it, this is a new hat that we just did out of Cardiff cashmere. And this is a hat in a hat. I think a lot of you may have seen this, but you, what you do is you do a provisional cast on and you do a hat. Then you go back, pick off that provisional cast on and go the other way. So you can have two solids. What we did um, is a stripe on one side. So that, so there are your hats. And then you just fold one inside the other, roll it up. I mean, it's just fabulous. So it's reversible. You can do any combination of colors, of stitch patterns. Um, you could do wide stripes, any number of things. It's just, it's just a hoot. So, so tell how many balls did this take? This, this took four. So two of the one solid color and yes. one each of two other Exactly colors. right. Yeah. There you go. So, so cute. Just and if you want a hat to match your scarf. There, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That is a fantastic hat. In fact, I actually came back and I'm ready to make one. And I told Eric that we're going to knit one together. So he made me promise that I wasn't going to shoot him when I did it because he says I'm not very nice all the time. <laughs> so I know that's hard for all of you to believe. Anyways, we're going to start with Dodici. So this is the 100% cotton. And we've done just a really neat classic cardigan. We played with reverse stockinette and stockinette. It's got a great ribbed border and a really neat neckline. I love where the V comes in. You have total control of where it is because it's set by where you put your buttonhole. And again, it's just classic. It weighs nothing, lots of fun colors, and the pattern continues across the back. It's not A-line, it's perfectly straight, but it's something that you can wear in any climate all year round. So this is the Dodici cardigan. And then, all right, Tet, here you go. Everybody, Tet, Tet, everybody. And this is also Dodici. And this is a really special sweater for me. Um, I actually got to knit it and we played with doing slip stitches. Most of you know, I love doing slip stitches. What that means is you put your needle in and you're sliding a stitch without knitting it. In this case, there's one row striped. I'm gonna scooch up just a little bit so they can see. So in here, in this detail, they're one row stripes. Normally when we do slip stitches, they're two rows so that it works back and forth. In this case, you knit the black all the way across. You hold your stitches, pull your needle back, pick up the contrast and go across. Now, both of your yarns are on this side. Turn your knitting around and you're gonna work it in reverse. So it's two knit rows, two purl rows. And there's only two rows in the center here. So the rest of it gets slipped behind. On the inside, sorry, there's slip stitches on the back side of all of the boxes. So what it does is it doesn't give you a line that goes across your body. It looks like little bubbles. It's just a really fun sweater to play with. All right, thank you. All right. Celebrate. Um, we called it Celebrate because you celebrate with all of these colors. The classic A-line. And it has internal pleats to it. The pleats are internal so that when you hold it up or you wear it, it just drapes on the body. So you get a subtle flare at the bottom. When it's on, it moves with you. When you do your shaping on the side, it makes the pieces stick out. Some of us do that on our own without the sweaters doing it. So this way it covers up all of that. In order to break up some of the striping, we put a vertical design inside the yoke and down the sleeves. Really dramatic colors, shaded background, injected shades inside. This was one of my favorite pieces to knit. And this is a shawl. It's knit in Celebrate and another yarn that we are changing the name of. Um, it was called Volante. It's now gonna be called Wisdom, but it's a blend of cotton and merino. So you can see all the shades. And again, it's back to that slip stitch pattern. You can see the triangle. And then at the top, we reversed it. So down here, the triangle is solid. And at top, the triangle is multi. 
And this is what it looks like on the body. So you can take it and drape it and just let the, the edges hang over the shoulders so you can see the color changes. What's neat about the size is that it's big enough to drape across the body like that. So you have total freedom to move in it. Really neat playing with all of the colors and watching them change. We've seen so many people knit this and finish it. It's unlimited the number of color combinations that you can do. So we did put combinations in there for you. If one of the pieces doesn't work, like you don't like the solid we picked, let us know what multi and we can find another solid for you. And it's beautiful on her. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful yes. She's and a fabulous she, model. She is. <laughs> yes. She's a very fabulous person. We're happy to have her. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the sweater that I was telling you when I was showing you the colors. So this is Celebrate, but it's two rows each of two diverse colors. So this is the bright multi mixed with a color called mouse, which is taupe and pink. But on, let me just throw that on. It's very boxy. So part of it is horizontal and part of it is vertical. So it sits very square on the body. There's side vents so that depending on the construction of your, not the construction of your body, but the shape of your body, it just sits really nicely across the shoulders. It can be a cardigan very, very easily. Just do it as two separate pieces. I'm gonna flip you around. And that's the backside. So again, horizontal stripes, vertical stripes, two rows of each color. And you can do similar colors. You can do very diverse colors. And the neckline is completely optional. I chose to do a rolled, thank you, a rolled collar, but we can turn it into a V-neck. You can just crochet the edge, completely up to you. She's folding everything really neat and beautiful, okay? You know me, it would be in a pile on the floor and at the end, I'd be crawling all over it, straightening it out. All right, so this is Pavlova. This is the other new yarn from Trendsetter for spring, summer. And in this case, the shading is very different from Celebrate. It all shades very subtle and changes from color to color. There's no big line that comes across it. It's just, it basically bleeds from one into the other. I'm gonna scooch up just a little bit. So now you can see it's called Arrows Up. It's a lace pattern. While the striping again is horizontal, it's got a great vertical line to it by the shape of the arrows going up. Classic in shape. There's no A-line to it. Because of the stitch pattern, I wanted to make sure it was easy to do. It's got a nice set-in sleeve to it, three buttons. I don't know what my deal was with three buttons this season, but there's lots of them. And the back just goes perfectly straight. And a few people fell in love with the jacket, but didn't want the jacket part of it. They wanted a shawl. And in fact, one of them is with us. Hi, Susan. We're going to spotlight her, Barry, so she okay. can show it. So, Susan, we're going to put you on the big screen. And you can see it's, Susan's piece is actually the same color as Ted is wearing. There you go, Susan. Isn't that gorgeous? So the idea came because of Susan. We were together <laughs> on a trip, and she saw the jacket and said she'd wear a shawl more. So we took it and designed it that way. Basically, it's the back, and you just continue with no shaping. And it is gorgeous. Uh -huh. So Susan, thank you for the idea. You're welcome. <laughs> you get full credit for it. And then I wanted one as well. So ah. this is another color combination. And again, you can see just how subtle that color striping is. But as a jacket, this would be what you get as the back and the front as well. Really dramatic shading, super, super light, great drape and movement to it. So you've got the jacket and you've got the shawl. And I think we incorporated the shawl in the jacket pattern. Um, speaking of patterns, um, I think we're doing the same thing that we've been doing for a while now. 
anything that you purchase here, you will get the pattern for free. We've got these really neat download cards. So it'll come with the yarn to you. If you want us to download it and email it to you, we can do that as well. But these download cards allow you to go online and download it so that you can keep it in your own pattern stash. Barry, could yeah. I ask a question? Please. On Pavlova, what is the fiber content again? On Pavlova, it is cotton and viscose, 75 cotton, 35 viscose. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is Sophio. This is a yarn that we did last season. And with Sophio, it is merino and cashmere. I forgot to put this under the little camera. But what's neat about it is it's all open spun fiber. And they keep the fiber in place by injecting it into elastic so that you can take it and pull it and it bounces right back. Super, super sexy, beyond soft. And this is a cardigan that Jan did for us. There you go. Now, the best part of the jacket is right here. I'm gonna just turn you sideways. There's gorgeous cables running right up the side seam, and then it carries over into the raglan shaping so that when you're walking, you can see the details on the shoulders. And as you turn and as you live life, you've got details going all the way down the sides. Now, most of the time we put everything right in front, but I didn't want anything and neither did Jan. We talked about this for a while, going right down this area. So now it's down the side, which just gives you a different look. Super soft, really easy, big needles and fast. So this is Sophia. Okay, Barry, I'm gonna show my tiny little scarf. Okay. <laughs> this it's is adorable. a work in progress. It's adorable. <laughs> okay. No, no, not that here. It's it's this. Oh, the one you're wearing, not the other one. It is new. It's something that Great Yarns did actually. Um, it's out of Sofio. Is this four balls of Sofio, Fonso? Three balls, yes. four balls? Yes. And tiny little tassels, which we love. It seems to be the rage tiny tassels in multicolors or solid colors. So this is super soft and just a little a little neck warmer. And you start with three stitches and you just work your way out and you can make it as large as you want. It's just garter stitch. Mm -hmm. So it's just adorable and it's weightless. And it's weightless. I took yarn home because I'm going to make that into a throw. <laughs> so <laughs> I may kill myself before I do all those fabulous tassels. So I may be calling your friend and saying, I. Hey, I need like a um, thousand tassels. You can do that. And this is Sophia as well. And we've been doing slip stitches for so long that in this case, we did it with short rows and not slip stitches. So it zigzags back and forth and it alternates between Sophia and Seta Suri. Seta Suri is a yarn from Lana Grossa and the colors work really well together. So you're getting a texture of Sophia as a chenille and set a Surrey that looks like a brushed mohair, but it's not mohair at all. It is set a Surrey and silk. So alpaca and silk and three different color combinations. So a red, a blue and a green. Now I've had people ask me, do you have to use three color combinations? The answer to that is no. You like one, you can do one, you could do 20 of them. There's probably 20 of them that match. I just sent Jan colors and said, okay, let's make it work. And she used all three of them. But it would make a great throw as a scarf. That's what you have. And not that I wear shawls, but anyways, this is on video, so it's going to be out there forever. But <laughs> that's the look of it just really, really dramatic. It looks like waves. We should have kept this as a cruise project because it looks like, you know, we need a little boat pin on here and we could say it's a cruise project and you don't need to take seasick pills for it. So it's all good. Really, really You fun. can make it as a jacket waves project for the Absolutely. cruise. Absolutely. It would be gorgeous. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do, oh, well, sure actually, set in sleeves. You could do it very easily. Yep. Yeah. It would be gorgeous as a jacket. Yeah. It weighs nothing. Mm -hmm. Super, super soft. 
Okay. Even if you did the collar kind of the fold back or that yep. that portion of the collar or something. Mm -hmm. It's also a pattern that you don't have to work bottom up. So if you wanted the pattern to go sideways, it could be done that way as well. With no weight to it, you don't have to worry about it growing and getting any bigger. And so we did a class a few, well, basically about a year ago, using two different yarns together and doing a pattern called the Piano Keys. It's a pattern that Rick Mondragon created probably 15 years ago. And I held it in my stash of patterns. It was done in black and white. And I absolutely loved it. I talked to him and asked him if I could use it. He said, absolutely, put your touch to it. And so we've used two different trendsetter yarns. Impulse or Impress is the multicolored, back to that soft, subtle shaping. And it's done with Volante. That's the effect of it. You're basically <laughs> knitting a shawl. It's done in short rows. And it goes from color to color. And one way is short rows. On the way back, you're doing zigzag with increases and decreases. It is really, really dramatic, but there's no bobbins. It's basic knitting. Once you start working it, you'll get the hang of it. All right, we're going to throw this on. I finished mine. Yay. <laughs> you did. It's gorgeous. So in this case, we just decided to do it poncho style. Now, it doesn't have to be what some people have done because they want to make it flexible. Don't do the seam. Put a crocheted edge and put a couple of buttons on there. You can undo it. You have a wrap. You want a poncho, put the buttons closed. It could be worn any direction that you want as well. So it can be as dramatic as you want or as subtle as you want. But when you walk, the movement in it and the drape is just really, really beautiful. She's going to do her pirouette in her turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mary, I have a question. Please. Um, we've been asked if the celebrate uh celebrate cross stitch pullover you don't have any crocheted neck bands right they're all knitted it's this one this one's crocheted it is crocheted okay there you go yeah. all right you're right lisa thank you yeah. Barry. it's a row of single crochet and then a row of reverse just to finish it All right, we're gonna start with the back on this sweater. Jan also did this one for me and I love, I'm gonna scoot you that way. There we go. So this is the one that uses Blossom and Papagallo. It's all garter stitch. There is not one pearl stitch in the entire jacket. So yay for garter stitch, fast and done. Two rows of each. What's fun about it is the cast on, is all the way up, all the way across, all the way down. So you've got a lot of stitches to start with. You put markers in your corners and you decrease until this center section is gone. What's left is this right here and you do a three needle bind off. So the visual is narrow and tall and the colors move around the body. This is a very subtle color combination, but you can go really wild and then with the fronts, the cast on is the bottom edge, up the side and across the top. And now the corners again are mitered to here. So the lines on the front go different than the lines on the back, but the technique is 100% the same. I just love the way it moves, the way the colors change. Papagallo, that's Papagallo. And so you see really dramatic colors in here. But by the time you take it and do two rows of Papagallo and two rows of Blossom, it cuts the colors and moves them around the body. And we did the same kind of neck finishing on here. We picked it up, 
garter stitch, two rows, two rows, two rows. So we kept it consistent the entire way. Again, really, really soft, doesn't weigh anything. And you can be dramatic, you can be subtle. And from this, we're actually gonna be doing a throw. We're gonna be doing panels in different colors, doing that same decrease mitered, and they're gonna go in opposite directions. So one will go that way and one will go that way. So one idea creates something different. Also, Papagallo. And this is three different colorways. I love this piece, Barry. I you know, had it in the show. It's so lightweight for such a large shawl. It's really lightweight. It's really soft. It's quite beautiful. That's it in all of its dramatic glory. It is a really big piece, but it weighs nothing. I want to say it was five balls of yarn, four balls of yarn. And it's done in a brand new stitch that Lana Grossa did in something else. And I fell in love with it. You do a double yarn over. And then on the row back, you only purl one of them and drop the other. So you get an elongated stitch and it gets slipped behind it. And you keep changing colors every four rows. So it just gets carried up the side. The nice part about it is that you're decreasing only on one end so that your pattern stays in place. There's no shaping on both. I'm gonna borrow you again. This would be a great jacket as well. Oops. And if you wanna carry a hanger with you, just snag it on the edge and then you're all set. So that's, that's the way it looks, just a great, way of movement, of color. And again, it weighs nothing. You're going to hear me say that 4,000 times, but in telling you about the yarn and the constructions, because it's tubular and it's got that airspace, it gives you really good yardage with no weight. So you can have something bulky on a big needle. I think I was on a 10 and a half, and it was about a week to get it done. I just wanted to see the next color combination, the next way it turns. So for me, the bait on the end of the hook is the next color. Tet, you look wonderful in that. Thank you. Tet, you look wonderful in everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Barry, what is the name of the mitered, the title of the mitered um, uh, blossom jacket? And about how much yarn? Is that tag on there? Yep. Okay, it's pattern number 6600Q. We're not very creative on our patterns. They've all got numbers. And there's six different sizes. On the website, so after we're done, everything is up on Fontel's website, all the different sizes and all the color numbers. I can't really give you all that detail because it'll take up too much of our time, <laughs> but it's all on there um, and including a bunch of color combinations. Just know also that if something doesn't make sense, you all know how to get in touch with me, call Fontel, we work together. All right, you're not gonna be thrown to the wolves. And this is Colorissimo. It's a yarn from Lana Grossa. That's Colorissimo. It is 100% wool. It's a super fine merino. And they space dye it. So it starts out really, really thick. As they start to spin it, they take different plies and run them together and they go through rollers. What those rollers do is they press out the yarn and turn it. So it's almost like felting it together. The fibers stick together. Because there's so much dramatic color in it, I took it and knit this side to side in a variation of yarn overs. So one wrap, two wraps, three wraps, two wraps, one wrap. The wraps are dropped, but now the colors are vertical. And just look at all the colors. This is one colorissimo combination. And that's the back. Just a real classic pullover, but with great stained glass look to it. I ordered it already. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love doing it. I'm excited. And this is also Colorissimo. What's fun about this is we all tease each other. We all have our favorite stitches. I happen to love feather and fan, but it has its look of, it's always a baby blanket. If somebody does feather and fan, you're making a baby blanket. Well, 
I don't have kids and I'm not making a baby blanket. So I chose to make a garment out of it. What makes it different is that it is done with short rows. And now you can see how it works. So wide end, short end, and then the next color is reversed. So there's four repeats going across. You do one repeat, come back. The next one, come back. The next one, and each time you're going further across. So you have a wide section to a short section, and then those sections reverse. And it's four different color ranges, and it just changes how the colors go. Again, I chose to do it as a poncho. It could easily be a wrap. It could be a blanket. At some point when the yarn is no longer available, it will be going home with me and I will be undoing that seam and having a blanket for the sofa because nothing should go to waste. But you can see just the, the shaping of it and the detail and the flow of the colors. Again, it would be a great cruise project because it's got those waves on it. And in fact, I knit this with Carrie and Fontel on a cruise. So maybe that's how the feather and fan wave part came into it. You never know how things get into this crazy mind. But that's what Colorissimo is. It's just the flow of color. Maybe that's why it's called Colorissimo. Now, there are times that you put yarn on a needle and you start to design it and you think, okay, not sure I'm gonna like it. That's how this all came together. Very classic, had a concept. And when it was all done, this so far this season is the number one, number one sweater. It's basic stockinette with a really subtle color change and yarn over knit two together to it. This is four different colors. And this is the degradé. So when I was telling you how the colors shade, that's the top. So while this skein really shows the blues and the greens, very subtle when it's knit. Mm -hmm. And then there's a gorgeous hood. It's really dramatic. You'll see this, um, you'll see access to all the videos. And this was one of the videos. It's also a unisex sweater. So the male model that we had is wearing it. And so is the female super soft, it weighs nothing, but on, it's gorgeous. All right. So it's just like going to the beach. You want to throw something on, you got a bathing suit underneath it, you want to go out at night, you just want to throw it on with a pair of jeans. It is the most classic pullover that I've done in my 50 years of knitting. And just in case you don't know it, because you're going to hear more about it, today, this year, on um, November 1st, Trendsetter will be 35 years old. I can't believe it. I don't know how that's all possible, but it is. We were all babies. <laughs> <laughs> I act like a baby now, but... Eight has caught up with me. And you can play with your colors. Now I've been asked, do I have to use four colors? No, you could do two colors. You could do one color and that yarn over lace will be what creates some detail to it. I will say, please don't take out that lace part because if you do it in just one color without the lace, go and buy a tank top or a sweater in a store. The beauty of this is playing with the color and watching the shading and the line that comes in. And then that's the hood. Now, I'm not sure anyone's ever gonna wear the hood. You wouldn't wear it in the rain because it's a knit sweater, but the detail part of it, I don't wanna pull poor Tet's hair out here, <laughs> but it's just a really good little detail. And I knotted this, it doesn't have to be knotted and it doesn't have to be there at all. So from the questions I've been asked so far, do I have to have the tie? The answer is no. Do I have to have the hood? The answer is still no. You can have whatever you want. It could become a cardigan. 
and it could become a cardigan with a hood, it could put a zipper in it, and it could be a pullover without the hood and just a really good crew neck crochet. Lots of options, but a really, really fun sweater. So, okay. So one of the first yarns that I showed you was Alpha. And it was the yarn that had that little baby sparkle inside the cage. And this is Alpha all grown up. So I did a little subtle zigzag to it with one zigzag, then two, then three, then four. A different count on the striping. And by putting more zigzags into it, it's what creates the A line. The more zigzags, the tighter they come together. So it's more tight up on top, and that's the effect. Really good drape to it, a great v-neck. It sits in the right spot and just drapes nicely on the body. And I don't know that you can see it on your screen, but there's a really uh -huh. subtle, faint metallic. So it's not in your face. It doesn't make it 100% dressy. It just makes it super wearable, and it can be dressy, or it can be every day. That choice is completely up to you. So alpha, two dramatic colors. You wanna go very opposite colors and it's got a really dramatic color range to it. All right. No, I don't have anything in here. No, the bathroom's over there. My mom, <laughs> <laughs> she'll come say hello in a minute. So this is Diversa, and this is, where'd it go? That's the Diversa. So all the viscose stayed taupe or natural through all of the colors. Mm -hmm. It's the cotton part of it that changes in each one. And that's the pullover I was telling you about. And I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. I'd like to say all the colors in this color range look like denim colors. There's that feeling of that shading like wash denim. It's really pretty. So there's 14 colors in the collection. And in this one pullover, they used 11 of the 14. And if I hold the sweater in the right place, it looks like I'm wearing it because my head's right in the right spot. So anyways, it would be a great man sweater. We did have people at the show, men at the show, that came and got the yarn for it. You don't have to use 13 colors. Um, we've expanded the sizing because we had men asking for it. Lana Grossa designed this and in their original instructions, they did just three sizes. I came home and there's now seven sizes. So I think it goes from a 36 up to a 60. So there's something for almost everybody. Um, no one's made any changes in it. They've liked the shaping, just really, really subtle, really easy going. The body is done in boxes of knits and pearls, and the sleeves are stockinette. Hello, Myrna. Can you hear me? And that's the back. And then Tet's wearing more dramatic. And um, probably about six months ago, I was doing a trunk show at a store, and a woman came in wearing a t shirt that had all these cuts in it. And I loved the cuts. The issue is that when you cut something that's knit, it starts to run. So I loved the look. We now created it all in knit and it will not run. At the bottom, it's bound off like doing a buttonhole. And then you do short rows, come back and continue on so that it's got highs and lows going across. And then up on top, it's just a yarn over knit two together. So drama on the bottom, more subtle on the top, and it says in the pattern to turn, to change from one to the other, right at your hip line. So where it's most comfortable for you. Some people are doing it a little bit higher so that the more drama down below. Again, it's all about you, all right? I can tell you to do something in a pattern. I can tell you to do something here now, but it's your body. And so easy enough to change these things to work the way that you like. So Diversa, one color, all on its own. And then we have the checkerboard. And what else?
if you love cashmere, anybody here gonna say no that they don't love cashmere? This is the, a cashmere wrap. It's done triangular. It's got a gorgeous border. And then you go into a two color slip stitch pattern and up to a solid at the top. Basically just two colors. It's knit with all the detail at one edge so that you get beautiful drama to it. Um, it can be classic over the shoulders and it's easy enough to do what we've been doing throughout the night. And that is just drape it around the body. So now the detail is completely different. Barry, is that Cardiff cashmere? It is Cardiff cashmere. Okay. It takes five of the main color and four of the contrasting color. So it's a total of nine skeins. And all the colors, Fontel has all of them. You can see them all online. You can pick two colors. You can pick one and ask us to find something to go with it. Again, contrast. It's all about contrast. This is charcoal gray and fuchsia. Okay, what you don't want to do is probably like red and pink. Okay, you can do red and gray. You can do red and chocolate brown. There's all different ways to do it. But you want two colors that are diverse enough so that you really get to see all the striping and all the changes and the slip stitches that are in here. All right, I'm adding one more to the mix and then we're gonna be done. Um, there's a jacket that I didn't bring to the show. It's one that got finished the day before and I didn't have all the details to it, but this is out of Dodici. So it's the 100% cotton. It's, well, it's somewhere around here. Anyways, it's a classic cardigan. But what I love about it is that it's basically half a body. So there is no, again with the hangers. The front and the back are exactly the same. It's a lace pattern. It's knit from side to side, but no neck shaping. So the back is worked all the way across. The front you work half, bind it off. Cast on the other front and work across. Now Ted's wearing it black on black. You can wear a white t-shirt. It'd be great to have a color underneath it. But if you're somebody who likes to have a classic knit cardigan, 100% cotton, super soft, and this is knit in a yarn over pattern that goes up and it goes over. And for the back neck, that's the split. So the back goes all the way across and the front is sewn to the center. So two shoulder seams, sleeves down, a beautiful classic cardigan. And it takes somewhere there's a tag under one of the arms, maybe, yep. All right. So in case you're gonna go looking for this, the pattern is in Lana Gross's lookbook, number 14, and it's pattern number 19. And it's called the Dodici jacket because we're so creative. So Lana Grossa lookbook, book 14, pattern 19. And it takes 12, 13, 14, or 15, 50 gram skeins. All right. Before, before we go to questions, um, two things. Do can you show a skein of pavlova yarn again? Can you show yeah. that? And do you happen to have that yellow Terra sweater? I do. It's right here. Oh my God! It's so cute. Can Tet put that on? No, she hit her. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she I her try on count. <laughs> I love this piece. I love it. This is cotton and linen, uh, Terra. Mm little textured yarn, and this is the cutest sweater. This is a pattern that they did in one size because one size fits everybody. The only thing that would need to change for some people is length. But as yeah. far as the cast on, I'm gonna, it's just big and boxy, got a little bit of rib at the bottom, plain stockinette, they're shoulder shaping, but the rest of it, it's just real classic. And Carrie's tried it on, everyone's tried it on, super, easy. There's nothing to think about. Yeah. And Tara is um, cotton and linen. And it takes to do this. Okay. 
seven skeins. Tet, show the side, because there's a little slit on the side. Yeah, it's yeah. just really comfy. Mary, what did you say the name was, and what is the gauge of the yarn? OK, on this one, this is Lana Grossa Linea, L-I-N-E-A-P. Book number 16, pattern number 11. And it's done on size three needles for the border and six for the body. And it takes seven skeins. And there's lots of gorgeous colors in Terra. And they're all in stock, which never happens. So the yard is Terra? Terra, T-E-R-R-A, which means earth, okay. like terra firma. OK. Thank you, Tess. You're about to right, I'm going to switch the camera real modeling. quickly. modeling. <laughs> I know. We are really lucky. Oops, I just shut my camera off. That's, That's not right, Barry. I'm going to highlight Fontel for a minute because she has two things she wants to show, and then we'll go to questions, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, you're on the... Oh, show that Pavlova while you're there on that screen. There we go. That's for you, Lisa. It's cotton and viscose, mostly cotton. I think about 78%. Thank you. You're very welcome. There you go, Fontel. Okay. I have two things to show you today, and they're both out of the same two yarns. They are done out of Nuance, which is 100% uh, cotton, and AM Cashmere, and I think all of you probably know well enough now that it's like one of my all-time favorite yarns. It's a blend of Merino and 10% Cashmere. So what I have on, and I'm going to kind of step back so that you can really see a lot of the a lot of the color. So this again is nuance and it changes colors as it goes like Pavlova and like Impress does. What I have on is a two-sided double crochet. So on this side, you see the diamonds are done in black and that's the AM cashmere and the background is nuance and it shades. When I turn it over, then the diamonds become the multicolor. And now you see the little, see the X's that are coming out of that? It's just, I think this is an absolutely amazing piece. Um, it was designed for me by a young man that's here um, in our naval uh, port. He is a cook on one of the ships and he is an amazing crocheter. So um, I've done some, some two-sided crochet and he said, I can come up with a kind of a unique pattern and so he's done the diamonds I just think this is extraordinary it is spectacular I mean I'm not a great crocheter I don't do a lot of it but I'm definitely going to dive into that pattern and do it it is beautiful it's like shadow it's shadow knitting and crochet that is it so here you go here's with the dark diamonds and here's with the light diamond so there's never a wrong side to this it's, it's just amazing Okay, now, now I'm going to move on. All right, come on over, Carrie. This is, <laughs> so this again is nuance. It's one ball of nuance. And this was the golden amber. So it started here with the yellow. It morphed into multicolor here. And then it ended in red. The same two yarns, nuance in the background, AM cashmere, slip stitched over it so it's true mosaic. It has a little I-cord edge. It's done on the diagonal. It's just got all the right things. It's not a difficult pattern to do. It's just really a lot of fun. So you can see how all those, those slip stitches are just magic. The way that the pattern is written is that it's very easy to read your knitting. So while it looks like there's a lot involved in here because of the diagonal, the pattern is written in such a way that it's automatic. You absolutely know where you are. It's very, very easy and fun to do. I did it as a scarf, but it's it's quite a long scarf because Nuance has got 380 yards in a ball. I've also done it as a cowl. And so you'll see because of the diagonal, you, you end up with these points on the bottom. They absolutely mirror one another so that if you don't want a scarf, you don't you don't start with garter stitch and you do you see on now. It's he's only on five more minutes. Oh. Some, somebody's not muted. <laughs> so <laughs> what you do then is just a three-needle bind-off. It's just, and again, it's just a really wearable piece. 
this cotton, I know people sometimes have some reluctance about cotton. Don't be reluctant about this. It is super soft and it's really easy to knit. So now back to you, Barry, because my screen just went yellow. Yeah, your screen's going crazy. There, no, you're back. Okay. All right. So if anyone has any questions, any conversation, you can all unmute yourself and talk at the same time. Barry, can that one, that, that scarf that was just shown, yeah. could that be done into a little jacket? Um, yeah. Like Chanel you just wouldn't do you just would not do the increase decrease yeah. absolutely it would be a gorgeous jacket yeah a little chanel jacket i think exactly so exactly what yeah. you said a chanel jacket keep it right to the hip you could do a little slit on the side very very easy to do it would be gorgeous yeah really beautiful okay any other questions barry do you have anything i think the color was desert sands and celebrate there um i think this was the desert sand okay mm -hmm. you just don't see the impact of all of it because it's broken up by volante with the teal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great Barry, are all these patterns, are they in any of the books? Because I saw a couple of books that I got a um, email that um, just look on the trendsetter and see. Yep. Fontel can get to the books as well. She can order them for you and we can download it and send it. You can have a finished copy or you can have a PDF version of it. But there's two new trendsetter books, 6600 and 6601. So there's a sweater book and an accessory book. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Barry, going back to the Lana Grossa linea. Yeah. What What is the gauge? Is that a worsted or a DK or what? It's about five and a half stitches to the inch. Oh, okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh, All like right, everybody's jacket. good. I want a jacket. <laughs> I, want that, I want that Chanel jacket. We can do it. So if anyone needs to look at something or if anyone has a question on something, you need a pattern change, it's what we do. It's who we are. So, you know, you can give us measurements. You can tell us that you need a neckline changed. Our job is to make sure you get what you want. Um, it's what makes us different. So mm. please keep in touch with us and let us know. Um, Fontel's going to have the video up online. There's mm sheets like this up on her website with all the different pattern numbers and the letters and the color combinations. And there's also kit information on there with prices. Um, I wanted to show you your transitions. Some yep. yarn I bought when you were in Florida and I- Oh, you did it. That's gorgeous. Where? We're missing it. No. Oh, it's spectacular. Rochelle, that's Isn't that gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Oh, it is. And it was one skein of yarn. Yeah. I have a lot of it, and I'm going to make lots more. <laughs> That's gorgeous. But it, it showed off that yarn beautifully. Yep. Well, you did, did a gorgeous job. You're a good knitter. Yep. We're going to keep oh, yeah, you. Yeah, I try. I try. <laughs> hey, Barry. Yes. Got a question on that celebrate pullover. How would it look to have a round neckline instead of the V neckline and do it straight instead of the A line? Would that still look good? To the A line is completely optional. I just like to throw it in sometimes because people mm -hmm. need a little fullness at the bottom. But it doesn't have to be there at all. And the neckline would be great. I mean, in fact, the nice part about it is the V neck breaks the horizontal mm -hmm. stripes. So okay. if you work it the right way, none of the stripes will be broken. Yeah, so the crew neck would be great. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, if there are no more questions, it might be Myrna time. Um, Where, she's, where's Myrna? She's on the other side. She hasn't been in the warehouse for a while, so she's checking it out. All right, well, I wanted, we all wanted to say hi, so. Next time, she'll come You're back. Ready. All right.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us, Barry. Thank you. The presentation was wonderful. Thank you. It's my Let's... pleasure. Everybody, it's so good to see you. Thank you yeah. for uh, coming and spending an evening with us. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. We'll see y'all soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Bye.